So my name is Melissa Furman. I am a master certified health coach. Went vegan in 2015 and kind of in a roundabout way, um, I got to be plant-based um, in 2015. I've tried all these different diets. I did the carnivore thing. I did the paleo thing. I counted points at the local Weight Watchers and did all of those meetings and um, really nothing worked for me long term. And in 2015, I was introduced to the movie Forks Over Knives. Many people are familiar with that. Um, it had, at the time, it had been around for quite some time and um, it was new to me. My parents gave me the uh, film Forks Over Knives and they had learned about it themselves. They live in Florida. And so they learned about it from a friend of theirs down there, went to the hospital, learned um, about what plant-based lifestyle is. He was running the lifestyle medicine practice there in, in the hospital. They learned of Forks Over Knives, sent me the video. They said, you have to watch this. So I did. And what I saw in that video, I couldn't unsee. I couldn't unlearn what I learned. And um, that was just a light switch moment for me. So after I watched Forks Over Knives, I read some more books, um, the pioneers in the plant-based movement. I was really focused on what these physicians had to say, what the research had to say. And I just kept reading more and more. And from that moment, was from watching that film Forks Over Knives, um, and then reading some more, kind of a light switch moment for me. Not everybody comes to eating whole food plant-based that way, but that's what it was for me. So I had two kids at home. I had, um, they were probably junior high age, um, and my husband and I just, I was the main cook of the family, but I purged the, pa the pantry, I purged the refrigerator and the freezer, and we changed what we ate. Um, and everything that we ate from then on at home was plant-based. Now you mentioned trying these other diets and it didn't work long term. How, did, how long did you try some of those other diets? I did the Weight Watchers for about a year um, and I got thin, um, but I was miserable. I couldn't eat anything. Um, I, I literally remember going to the, I was hungry and I remember going to the kitchen and I was hungry, I didn't know what to eat, so I ate pickles. I literally ate pickles for my snack and a bunch of pickles because <laughs> they were no points. But the sodium in there and I didn't feel satisfied and, and just, Ultimately, I got off that diet because I couldn't maintain. I was miserable, I didn't have the energy, and I was too thin. And then I did the paleo diet, and probably did that for a year, year and a half, and I did that with my husband and our kids, and you know, we ate bacon-wrapped everything, and, and, um, and it just messed with my GI tract. Um, I didn't lose the weight, um, probably gained a little bit, and it just didn't work for me. And quite frankly, when I was eating that, um, the paleo diet, it didn't feel right to me. It just didn't feel right. And I just felt like something was missing, but I didn't know what it was. When you were eating the paleo, what kind of foods were you eating? Well, I guess specifically, I remember bacon wrapped, sh wrapped shrimp. I did a lot of coconut oil, steaks, chicken, just kind of a whole bunch of heavy meat. And we did still have some vegetables and, and some rices and so on, but it was mostly meats. The Forks Over Knives documentary, that was enough? It was the Forks Over Knives movie. My dad's a scientist, so I grew up needing the evidence to, to, to prove things, right? And, and my mom is a home ec major, and so the kitchen, I was very familiar with the kitchen. I cooked all my life. And so I kind of put the together, the science and the cooking together, and it just really, I connected with it. And so it made sense to me. And then when I read more, um, that just really solidified it for me. So you've been doing this since 2004? 15. 15. So you've been doing this longer than any of the other ones. What specifically did you notice physiologically, mentally, or emotionally that changed? Right. So it's a really good question because um, it's what I experience with my clients right now is my energy was the first thing to change. And that's what I hear with my clients all the time. That, and they don't expect that. I know it's coming, but they don't expect that. And they just say, I feel better. I feel lighter and I, and I have more energy. And that's what I experienced. Um, I didn't have a whole lot of weight to lose, but I did lose some weight, but I lost six inches in different parts of my body and my waist and my arms and my chest and so on. So I lost six inches, which told me that I had inflammation in my body that I didn't know I had. So I felt better, I felt lighter, I lost inches, and I had way more energy, and that was just the beginning. Now, how do you know this is safe and healthy? How do I know that the food is safe and healthy? Yeah, I mean, cutting out animal altogether. 
because some people say you have to eat animals. So because I'm doing my due diligence, I'm reading the research and I'm reading um, books that are based on the research that explain to me how I can eat all plants and still survive and thrive, I know, and I know what my body's telling me, kind of that wisdom of the body, I know that I'm doing what's right for my body. I hear a lot of people describe it in the same way, they feel lighter. Yes. Do you feel like you're easily satiated at this, you know, when you're feeling lighter? When I feel lighter, I just feel like I can just go and I have a lot of energy that I can just do anything and not need a nap. Um, and when I eat a meal, I eat a lot of food, Jeff. Um, I love to eat and I love to eat delicious, flavorful foods. And so I'll eat quite a bit at a meal and then I can snack throughout the day guilt-free. Like I know that my food that I'm eating won't tank my health, won't make me feel bad. And so when I can, when I can do that with confidence, and I can do that to nourish my body. I know that what I'm putting in my body is healthy. So yes, I will get hungry eventually, right? But we all get, get hungry. And I, can know, I know I can go and eat plant-based foods that will nourish me. And then I don't feel bad later. Do you do any kind of intermittent fasting or anything like that? So I've kind of dabbled a little bit in intermittent fasting just to limit my calories. I'm not eating after six or maybe not eating after eight and then not... Um, you know, not snacking at night, basically, and then just waking up and eating at maybe six or seven in the morning. So pretty much just like a maybe 12 or 16 hour fast. Here you are now, you have all these credentials. Let's talk a little bit about that. How did you evolve into the credentials that you've acquired and, and this health coach position that you that you've taken on? Right. That's a really good question, because for me, it's kind of been a gradual um, because I stayed home with my kids. I'm an entrepreneur and I do stuff on the side, but my kids were my main focus. So I was a stay home mom doing entrepreneur stuff um, at home and supporting my husband. So my main job was to nourish and feed my family. So that was my main job. And then as they grew and needed me less, I would do more in my entrepreneurship and then start thinking, what am I going to do next? And so during the COVID pandemic, I started to think, what can I do? And so I got certified in um, plant-based nutrition from eCornell and the T. Colin Campbell Center for Nutrition Studies. And I also got a certification from the Ruby uh, Culinary Academy, so in plant-based um, cooking. So then that wasn't enough. I knew I wanted more. And so then that's when um, a friend of mine uh, is a lifestyle medicine physician. He had been telling me over the years to become a health, a health coach we need more health coaches, we need more health coaches. So that really, I heard him in my ear and I said, I think that's what's next for me. And it was the right time for me because my kids were older and didn't need me as, as much. And one was out of the nest already at that time. So I went back to school and got my health, health coach certification. Now, I would like to discuss that a little more, but, but first, before I forget, your husband did this with you, right? Yes, he came um, after me uh, about three months. So. Um, like I had mentioned earlier, Jeff, that I had done the paleo diet. I've done um, Weight Watchers, which I, again I want to be clear, it did. The Weight Watchers did work, but it didn't. Um, when I say it worked, I lost the weight. But no, what I know now and what I know then are two different things. So I lost the weight, but I couldn't maintain, and I was hungry, and I didn't feel satisfied. My family thought that this was just another fad diet that I was going to be on, and that it would be short lived. I cooked one thing for dinner and one thing for lunch if they were home for lunch, and that's what we ate at home. And then they could do whatever they wanted to when they were out at school or business or whatever. And so, um, but they loved the food. They loved the food. And I would educate them and share the information that I would read because I, I, I read all the time about what this is because I want to know. I want to know what I'm putting in my body. And so they would eat the food at home, and then gradually they would make the plant-based choices out. Um, my husband would order the, um, he works in the corporate world, so he'll order the plant-based options when he's out and about. And it's really interesting to see the dynamic and more we see it now because he'll see his coworkers or whoever he has meetings with at, at dinners or whatever and, and they'll be saying, hey, that looks really good, what is that? And eventually if he's out with um, people on a regular basis, you know, they'll go to the restaurant and say, I'll have what he's having because they know it's delicious and they know it's healthy. So it's really fun to watch because I like to speak through my actions a lot in a social situation especially and let people see um, instead of me preaching really, though if they ask, I'll be happy to share the information. Did he also experience some 
physiological changes like you did? Right. So I could say both of us started to sleep better, not sweating as much. Um, I think heartburn was probably a, a improvement on, for me. Um, yeah, so I, th I think we did, and, and we both lost some weight, yeah. Nice. What about your kids? My kids. My daughter is now 20, and she has been plant-based since we started. And so she's in college and um, living a plant-based lifestyle. Um, she now is in her own apartment, so she's cooking herself. And um, in fact, she has her own little bread baking business that she makes plant-based um, vegan breads. And so she sells that to professors and other students, which is fun. Um, our son was plant-based when he was home with us and he's out on his own. So um, he's what I call on a seafood diet. So if he sees food, he eats it. So <laughs> yeah. Now, your daughter also, it'd be kind of interesting to hear a little bit more about what she's getting into. She's studying nutrition, right? She is. So she started out um, in college to be a speech pathologist. Um, she has an affinity for language and for speech and, and helping people um, with that. And, and she's really enjoying it and then kind of thought, maybe I need to do something different because her passion is food and her passion is health. And she knows what it's done for her. She's seen her mom and her dad do this. And she was really, um, she's really living the lifestyle. And because her university offers a nutrition and dietetics degree, um, she looked into it. And so she changed her major after her first year and um, has never looked back, has really enjoyed it. Going back to your certifications and what you do, or more specifically, what you do as a health coach. Talk a little bit about that. What's that, what, what does that look like? Somebody what, finds you online or, or just you you know, word of mouth and they call you or how does that work? And do they see you face to face or is it all virtual? And what's that process like? Yeah, that's a really good question because um, a health coach is, is not somebody that a lot of people have in their life as, as part of their medical team. And it's kind of a new approach in the health space. Um, so I'd like to use the analogy of if you wanted to go and do a weightlifting contest or be a weightlifter, you probably, or maybe even a marathon runner, you probably would go and hire um, a fitness coach or a running coach. And so a lot of people are familiar with what that relationship is like. So the, the coach is somebody who is really knowledgeable about how to get to the goal, to run the marathon or to lift the weights and build muscle. And so the coach will be the person to help work with the individual and get them from where they are today to where they want to go and help them in their unique lifestyle to work with them with their um, nutrition and their patterns in life, if they travel a lot, if they're, you know, stay at home and so on and so forth. And they'll work together to, to reach their goal. So it's very similarly, a health coach will do that. And so a health coach will work with the individual if they want to lose weight, if they want to address a diagnosis that they have, if they want to sleep better, um, the list goes on, and a health coach can do that. Now, I like to specialize in a plant-based uh, nutrition um, aspect of it, so we use food as medicine. Now, I'm non-medical, so I work on habit change and behavior change, and then I like to really approach this with the physician the individual's physician so that they can address medical needs and medications and so on. And then I help them with the integrating this all into their unique lifestyles. It sounds like you're kind of like a liaison between the physician and this person actualizing this in their everyday behaviors. You kind of bridge that gap. I do. I do bridge the gap. And you know, it's really fun because I feel like I'm their cheerleader. You know, I encourage them and I believe in them on the days that they don't believe in themselves or don't think it's possible or there's resistance at home or they don't know how to cook it and they, they know what they want. They know they want to feel better. They know they want to lose weight. They know they want to get rid of whatever it is for them, you know, heartburn or whatever, but they don't know how. And so I help them. I take their hand and I'm their partner. And we do this together and I believe in them and I cheer them on and I hold them accountable. And it's really interesting because a lot of people want that accountability that they may not say it because it helps them and they know, I mean, it helps them if they know that they're gonna, my clients tell me, I know I'm gonna talk to you every week, so I know I need to make this new recipe or I know I need to do this or I know I need to learn this lesson. So I have an online course, that's how I work with a lot of my clients 
is they go through a course at their own pace, but then we meet on a weekly basis virtually in a group coaching session. And I also work with individuals um, virtually or in person if they're in my area. We'll work together that way as well in a coaching session. The group coaching I will do through my online course. You know, this is really fantastic because when I was first learning about all of this, it seemed like the ball was being dropped because people expect doctors to do kind of what you're doing, but doctors just don't have time for it. Yeah. And, and so you're, you really are filling that void. Right. Yeah, that's fantastic. Right. And may I address that a little bit? Yeah, more? absolutely. So my friend, Dr. La, uh, Sal LaCognina, who's in Florida, who is the physician who introduced my parents to the plant-based lifestyle, who then introduced me, who is the physician who encouraged me to be a health coach. It is because of him I'm a health coach he helped me realize that physicians, men, most of them don't have the nutritional education in their schooling. They go to school for many, many years, but they don't have the education. They may have a couple of hours, especially for the plant-based nutrition. They don't have that education to use food as medicine in that way. And so I'm helping, like you said, bridge that gap and help them, but then not only that, they don't have the time. And there's a high, high, high rate of burnout with physicians. And so to take the burden off of physicians to help their patients reach success, it's a win-win situation. Wow, this is, this is like a whole new evolution in the medical arena. Yeah. Yeah, so in my, in my health coaching training, there is, they're seeing more, a higher enrollment in health coaching because of the need for health coaches. Now, another thing that, that excites me about this, I just interviewed a nephrologist, yes. <laughs> and she lives in proximity. Yes. You know, she's raising some children vegan from birth, and she doesn't know really how it's gonna unfold for her children growing up in such a challenging world where everyone pretty much around her is different. And there's a dearth of, you know, vegan restaurants. There's a new one now that you also enlightened me to that's in proximity to Pythagoras. But it's still, we've got a long ways to go. And one of the things she kept saying is when she's talking to her patients, this is really challenging. This is really difficult. This is not easy. And I didn't, you know, personally, I was like, I don't want to, I don't want people to hear that. But at the same time, they have to, we have to be honest. Does it necessarily have to be so challenging? I don't necessarily know that cooking and eating plant-based is difficult. I think maybe what the difficulty is, is the behavior change. When we change the patterns in life, when we're used to reaching for certain foods or ordering certain foods, that I think is a big change. That's what I hear in my clients. I can't make this. I'm known for my whatever spaghetti. And to change that because the grandkids know that they love grandma's spaghetti that is hard because this is grandma's identity as her spaghetti and her spaghetti sauce with the meats and all of that. And this points to why a health coach is so key to success is that behavior change is hard. I mean, it's hard for me to remember certain things just on a regular basis, let alone change something and, and then try to go down that path. And so the difficulty might lie in changing the behaviors in life changing what we choose and knowing how. So um, that might be something that she was talking to her patient. Yes, we have to be realistic that it's not a walk in the park, just flip a switch and it's, you're suddenly plant-based. It does take work, but the work pays off. And it's really fun to watch as a health coach because my clients will get results in three and four weeks. I have a patient, a, a, this nephrologist referred a patient to me. She has multiple medical concerns. She's on a bunch of medicines and she and I worked together and in six weeks, Jeff, she got off of four blood pressure medicines and she would use phrases with me. She's like, I have hope and that is what drives me and this is why I do what I do is because I I believe in people and what they can offer this world and when people are sick when they don't feel good when they have um, feel bad about themselves or their situation that they don't know where to go they don't know what to do and I know and I have seen 
how food can change people's lives. And now they use terms like I have hope. I feel like getting up in the morning. I don't sleep till noon. It is amazing to see these things happen. I have another patient who, a client who has uh, Crohn's, Crohn's disease. And in four weeks of working with me in my course, she doesn't have the inflammation pain that she used to have. And it's just because she changed her food. Wow. This it is, is powerful. Yeah, it's beautiful and it makes me emotional on so many different yeah. levels. You know, because not only are people suffering unnecessarily, but animals are suffering unnecessarily. And, you know, the longer I've been doing this, the more I'm, I, I feel connected to all of that. And it, and it just really gives me, it gives me hope too, that, that there's positions and people like you out there, uh, again, bridging that gap. And it also makes me think about, you know, one of the things that vegans hate more than anything are failed vegans. So I ask people, what, what do you think really is the cause of that? And I have my own ideas on that. And a lot of times, whenever I watch maybe somebody's story about how they failed, it's like they never did anything really consistently long enough, maybe endured, you know, releasing all those toxins or whatever it is, <laughs> but, you know, or acclimating their microbiome whatever it might be, you know, systematically introducing these new foods. But they never really sought professional help from somebody that has, uh, you know, certification in lifestyle medicine or, or what you have um, specifically, you know. They never really sought, sought help in this direction. And they, they typically probably go to a doctor who only knows, you know, how they eat and, and they most likely eat animals. And so they're not going to recommend the same things that you would recommend, of course, because, again, they don't know any better. And then you also went into, like, what grandmother, you said something about, like, this is what grandmother made. This, this is comfort food. It's comfortable because it's an expression of love. It is. And now we're, we're saying, don't do that. You know, that's, that's challenging in and of itself, you know, this whole cultural dilemma they may find themselves in. This is really going to help solve a lot of the problems with this whole movement, I think. Somebody could be a health coach and not necessarily have these credentials, right? What do you think about that? Right. So um, I am a master certified health coach. I do have um, to go to school, you know, to get those credentials. Um, and many people call themselves health coaches and don't have the credential. Um, there are many places you can get certifications and different types of certifications. So um, it, it's just, you know, I advise people to, to make sure that you look into um, what the backgrounds are of um, the people you're talking to yeah. and to understand where they're coming from and, and, you know, how they've been educated. Do you think there's maybe some caution people should take in just getting anybody as a health coach. Right. I mean, you know, when we go to the store, we'll, we'll, we'll research what kind of, you know, car to buy or what kind of, you know, any other product we would research. And so that's, that's a good um, advice to have for anybody you would want to work with in the health space. What kind of credentials might somebody want to consider somebody having if they're going to choose somebody like this? And where can they find somebody like this? Right. So good question. So there are different types of health coaches out there. And so, you know, just learning where they got their credentials and, and what that means. And, and there are different types of health coaches that specialize in yoga therapy or plant-based nutrition or fitness or athletics. And so there are different types. And, and with those specializations, folks can find what will serve their needs. They might need the yoga therapy. They might need the athletic um, or fitness training. And if somebody wants to be a health coach. Right. So there's a National Board of Health and Wellness Coaches um, organization that is um, accredits different um, schools. And when you find their list of accredited schools, those are great places um, to look for um, what will fit your needs if you'd like to be a health coach. And um, once you get your certification as a health coach, you can continue your um, 
credentialing through the NBHWC, which is what I'm on my way to do, and I'm studying for my exam. And once I have those credentials, I will continue with plant-based nutrition um, specialization certif certificate through the ACLM, American College of Lifestyle Medicine. Let's elaborate a little bit more about why you think people might fail. Mm. I'm glad you came back to this because I wanted to address that because there's several reasons why a person might um, fail at going vegan or being plant-based. Um, and, and you've already addressed a couple of things that I think are at play here is one of them is being consistent. And, um, you know, Dr. Michael Greger, many of your viewers might be familiar with him. And he has a good, great analogy, I think, is if you were to hit your, your knee um, or your shin on a glass coffee table corner repeatedly and, and you have this wound on your, your leg, if you keep hitting it, it's going to not heal properly or heal at all. And so it's a very similar analogy to if you are not consistent and you go just meatless on Mondays, then you might not get as much results. Yeah, you might feel better on Monday, but you may not feel better long-term and you, you probably won't move the needle much on your health, your overall health. Yes, it's helping animals and it's helping the environment on Mondays, um, but with, that, with regard to health, it might not help you get to where you want to go. So that might be a reason why some people don't reach the success that they want is, is the lack of consistency. Um, the other, another reason possibly is, is a lot of people like to re rely on pro highly processed foods, um, even if they're plant-based and they're not as nutritionally dense. And if you're looking on a continuum scale, they would be healthier than maybe a, a meat alternative or an animal-based alternative, but they're not going to be as nutritionally dense as a whole food plant-based product, um, like would grow in your garden. Yeah. Now, when you say consistency, I don't really think Meatless Monday. I, I was thinking like they might try fasting and then raw and then they no FODMAP. Or, to me, it's just eat beans, greens, grains, fruits, veggies, mushrooms, nuts, seeds, herbs, and spices, and just keep it that simple. How do you articulate it in the most simple way? Right, and I do it simply. I like to focus on just being simple. I work with my clients and I say, what do you like to eat? Let's start there. You know, we'll take recipes that they're used to making at home or foods they're used to ordering when they're dining out, and we'll say, how can we make this healthier? How can we make this plant-based? How can we shift things so that the flavors are still the same that you enjoy? And then you can do it in a more healthful manner. And then when you do it that way, they enjoy their food. It's more likely for them to continue eating that way. And then at the same time, I not only show my clients how they can integrate this into their lifestyle, but I also tell them why. And when we're educating, when we know about what what we're putting into our bodies and how that's working for us, then we can make informed decisions and know they can look at a plate of food and they can know how that's nourishing themselves. Instead of just, it's just a checkbox, it's a reason. And it's their, it connects to their why. Why do they want to be healthy? Do they want to play with the grandkids? Do they want to travel? Do they want to, you know, get off the medicines? It's, it's their why, and it's, it's they understand their food. And when they nourish themselves that way, it's an empowering feeling. Is there any truth to moderation killing? So if you're interested in just being moderately plant-based, then you're helping the animals, you're helping the environment in a moderate way. You're helping your health in a moderate way. So it kind of depends on, on what you're interested in doing. As far as the animals, some people also think that ethics are more important. And, and I say that because if somebody's grounded in the ethics and they have a little bit of a difficulty with the health and they're trying to figure all this out, because it could be you know, a little, lot to figure out and there's a lot of social challenges and all that. But the, if you're grounded in the ethics, it, it helps endure some of those challenges. Mm -hmm. Do you ever go there? Yeah, I mean, I came at the plant-based lifestyle through a health lens. A lot of people come to the plant-based lifestyle or the vegan lifestyle through the ethics lens or an environmental lens. And at the end of the day, the, it's a common goal is to eat whole food plant-based diet. And whether you get to it from one of those three lenses, really what works for the individual in the most and what, what helps them connect to their food and why they do that. 
as I learned more and more about the health, because that's how I'm wired, that's how I came to this lifestyle, is, is more through the lens of health and wellness, then I'll read, again, I'll read more, and then I start learning about the animals, and I'll start learning about the impact on the environment, and it makes sense to me. And so the more I learn and the more I know, I internalize that. And so not only do I see my plate of food in a nutritional aspect, I see it in an environmental aspect, and I see it in an animal advocacy aspect. Compassionate one. Compassionate. Yeah. Yeah. Now, do you do anything to maybe reinforce that or or affirm that or, or really take the ethics to another level ever? Like watch... Uh, Earthlings or Dominion or go to an animal sanctuary or anything. Have you done any of that yet? Yeah, I've, done, I've seen some of the, the documentaries, absolutely. So I think part of my story that I left out that's really important. Um, so I became plant-based in 2015 and never looked back um, and just kept doing it in greater degrees as time went on. In 2017, I believe it was, I went down to Florida to visit my parents where they live and um, I met in person this Dr. Sal, Sal LaCognina, whom I spoke about, and he was helping host a veg fest in Florida. And I went on this particular weekend to visit my parents because I wanted to go to that veg fest. I've never been to one before. And so I thought that would be fun. And so um, I, I went by myself. My family stayed behind. And so I visited that weekend. And I thought I would go for a couple of hours on that Saturday. I think it was Sunday, actually. And I stayed the whole day. I watched all of the speakers, I you know, visited the booths and ate the food and it was phenomenal. Jeff, I left that veg fest on fire. I wanted to bring this home to where I lived. I lived in Oklahoma at the time in Tulsa. And so I came home from that trip. I was part of a potluck group, a plant-based potluck group. And so I came back to that, um, to Tulsa and I told my friends all about it. There were 15,000 people at that veg fest, and it was their second year. And I, it just was awe-inspiring. So I came back, told my friends, and I said, hey, we need to do this in Tulsa. And they thought, I looked, they looked at me like I had three heads, you know, like, what? This is a lot. And they're like, that's great, but, like, how do we do this? And so that kind of, you know, put on pause for a little bit. And then two weeks later, Jeff, they, seven of those ladies went on a vegan holistic uh, cruise. And so they did that for a week and they listened to the speakers. So it was kind of like a veg fest on, on a cruise ship, right? And they came home from that cruise. They had talked to a speaker on that cruise and they said, um, after he spoke and they said, if you, uh, what should we do? We want this in, in our city. And he says, you need to have a veg fest. And they said, my friend Melissa just told us we need to do that. So they came home off that cruise and they said, Melissa, we'll help you. So that was uh, 2018, um, that's, that's uh, winter, spring of 2018. And I formed a nonprofit organization in Tulsa with some of my friends or with one of my friends who's my co-founder. And uh, in 2019, we held our first Veg Fest in Tulsa, Oklahoma. So as part of that, we had speakers come to our um, event from all over the country. Dr. Sal came to that event and spoke. And yes, we had the health part, we had the environmental part, and we had the animal part all represented there. Now, you live here. <laughs> I live in Houston. <laughs> in Houston, yeah. You doing anything like that around here? So my focus right now is my health coaching practice. Um, after uh, the VegFest in 2019, uh, which almost 5,000 people attended, by the way, in Tulsa, which was pretty phenomenal, there were 250 people who signed up for cooking classes at one booth. And that one booth, that sign-up sheet told me that so many people said, yes, I want this for me, but how? How do I do this? And that was the impetus for me to get more certifications, to learn more in an official capacity so I can help people individually. So the, the Veg Fest is wonderful. A, a group um, social uh, event like that is wonderful. Um, it brings people together and it shows it in a fun atmosphere. 
but I wanted to help people on a more individual basis, which is why I sought my certifications in cooking, nutrition, and um, plant-based nutrition and health coaching. So while I've been in Houston for two years, almost three years now, um, my focus is my health coaching practice because I'm seeing direct results in working with um, clients in that way. The future is open. I may do something like that, but right now there's no plan on the books. How can people find you? How can they find me? So um, I have my website, melissafurman.com. And so I'm there and you can see uh, more about me and my course that I offer and how to connect with me. And then I'm also um, on Instagram and Facebook at MAF Health Coach. Do you have any regrets? Of what? In relation to anything that we've been talking about. Not at all. Not at all? I find that this is my passion, that I've met amazing people, connecting to people through food, through you know, compassionate animal advocacy and environment. Um, just an amazing community of people who are well-intentioned have amazing goals for the planet and for others um, who want to help people. And so, no, I don't have any regrets whatsoever. You think we'll ever see a vegan world? I don't know that we'll see a vegan world in my lifetime, mm -hmm. but I'm going to do everything I can to help those who I meet to live healthfully. Mm -hmm. I believe that we are all put on this earth for a purpose and that we need to live out our purpose. And you know, I've had different seasons in my life, and this is my season that and being a health coach and helping people because my kids are out of the nest now. And I don't regret not being vegan earlier for the sole purpose of I have a story, and I'm using my story to connect with other people. Specifically, my course um, addresses midlife people, midlife women. I had a really hard time identifying who do I really want to work with for my course. And the reason why I, my course is designed for midlife women is because we have a, a group coaching um, session weekly that I had mentioned to you. And there are a lot of topics that women talk about in midlife that this is a safe space that we can talk about that they might not talk about in a space in mixed company or mixed ages. Um, and so that's why I, I focused on that group. Now I do coach men and I do coach all ages. However, in my course specifically, it's midlife women. And the reason I chose midlife women is because obviously I'm a midlife woman and I have a story and I've tried the things that didn't work because I've listened to the headlines. I've listened to the talk shows. I've listened to you know other people's opinions and it didn't really get me anywhere in my health, in my health journey. And if I can live through my life by leaving an example to others and being there, just being open. And now that I have credentials to officially be able to do that, I'm here for people. And that's how I'm choosing to live my life. We all have a purpose and I want people to not be limited through their health or through a lens that people are telling them to look through. I want to give them the freedom to live what how they want to through their food and not be limited by health restrictions or other people telling them how to eat, the family dynamic. We can, we can work with that. There's really no reason to not be able to work through hurdles and obstacles together to get to the other side. Do you have any tips for people generally speaking, who aren't health coaches or even aspiring to be, but still want to help people, you know, in the most effective way? Um, read, learn, and do so wisely, looking at who the, the source is and what their credentials are to learn um, properly, you know, what the information says. If somebody's just talking to somebody and they want, or they have a family member who's who's not getting it, what's the best approach to, to, to approaching people with this information without turning them off? Right, right. It is a delicate manner because food is so personal, right? Food is so um, sentimental. You know, back to the grandma who makes the spaghetti sauce, that's, you know, very sentimental to people, and I understand that. Um, my love language is through food, um, one of them. And um, so, you know, I think we can, the tortoise and the hare. 
the tortoise wins the race because we do this slowly and intentionally with purpose. And so if we can help people just in every 1% matters, if we can shift 1% today and 1% tomorrow and continue that race, we will win. So if, if people who don't have the credentials still want to help people, absolutely, you can show them what you do, how, where you shop, what you eat, what recipes you follow, where, you know, where do you dine, that kind of thing. Do you have any quotes you want to share? Quotes, yes. I love Ralph Waldo Emerson. What lies ahead of us and what lies behind us are tiny matters compared to what lies within us. And I, that really motivates me because what's within us is so powerful. It doesn't matter what's ahead of us. It doesn't matter where we've been, what lies within us. We have the power within to make a difference and to do what we want to do and get to where we want to get. Is there anything that we didn't talk about that you want to get out there? Food is so powerful. We've talked about how it's sentimental and how it's part of our identity and so on and so forth. But when we learn about our food, not necessarily all of the chemicals and all of the finer details on it, but if we learn about how we can nourish our bodies and what we're eating and how that it can affect us in a short amount of time, I think people might think twice about eating more plant-based. Um, even if you eat plant-based one day a week and you start to feel better, then you go two days a week and then it just snowballs from there. So a lot of people look up to the top of the mountain, they think, I can't push that boulder up there. But when you start the journey, it will become easier and you'll start to feel better. And when you start to feel better, you start to be more motivated and you start to do more. And I see this with my clients. When they start, it's hard to start. But when you're doing with, with somebody who can hold you accountable, who can cheer you on, who can show you the way and take you there with them, then you feel like, I can do this. This is worth it. And I do feel better. I sleep better. I don't have heartburn. I don't ache. I'm not tired. I don't need a nap. Oh, and I'm helping the environment oh, I don't need that much protein. I can get it through beans. I can get it through all of these other sources. And then you feel amazing. And then you're off these medicines. And then you have more money to spend on vacation or whatever. I mean, it just gets better and better as you go. Is it expensive to do this? Great question. How expensive are medicines? How expensive are doctor's visits? How expensive is trying to stay at home instead of taking part in life? You know, if we lean on a lot of the, pr the processed and dining out and ordering food out and all of that, absolutely, that, that adds up. But beans and rice are the cheapest foods out there, practically, potatoes, and they're good for us. And what are some of your favorite foods to eat, and what do you eat on a regular basis, daily basis? Okay, so, um, gosh, what do I eat on a daily basis? Um, love the oatmeal in the morning, um, love having a big bowl of overnight oats um, in the morning. I eat fruit like there's no tomorrow, um, vegetables. I made um, veggie cakes for dinner tonight over a bed of lettuce and some hummus and a walnut dressing. So um, that's, a, that's a dinner I enjoy on a, on a basis. I was traveling this weekend. We um, looked for restaurants that offer vegan options and those are the restaurants we go to. And, Gosh, I think I had a plant-based burger last night and um, a tofu scramble this morning. So it's, it's, it's out there. You just have to know what to look for. And again, another reason why a health coach can help you because we help give you the tools and the information and know where to look and know what to use um, to be able to live this way. I think it would be great to close this with some resources. You've already mentioned how they can find you. You may have mentioned some other things along the way, like uh, the, the Dr. Sal. Is that is that enough to say it that way. <laughs> yeah, Dr. Sal LaCagnina has a book that he wrote called um, How to Grow Up Without Getting Old. Um, I helped him put that book together. It's a compilation of his articles that he wrote for a local newspaper, which is pretty tremendous. Um, and uh, Dr. Greger is a wonderful resource. I, I really turn to him for a, a lot of um, more of the scientific um, facts, um, if people are asking. So those are great resources. Um, T. Colin Campbell is a great resource as well, and Dean Ornish. These are the pioneers, Dr. Esselstyn. Those are kind of the doctors that I like to lean on, and I, I steer my, my clients towards um, because I know that they know what they're talking about. A 
last minute encouraging word? Don't knock it till you try it. And it's worth trying. Um, it's, it's freedom in health and it's freedom in so many ways. And um, I don't know, I just think it's, it's something to think about because it can mean so much to a person's life.